on the pretender. Yeah, sure. Well, they've never told you about this place. Yeah. She came here exactly this time every year. She loved the spring. You were in love with her, weren't you? Yes. There was a part of her she kept hidden. Mr. Lyle shows up, your father disappears. It's too coincidental to be just a coincidence. the camera. All right, we're all done, kids. Ow! Where's Planned Parenthood when you need them? Hey, hey, folks, doing? You know, we got a special going for uh, extra copies for Grandma and Grandpa. Do I look like I drive a minivan? Do you know this man? Yeah, yeah sure, that's Jared. Adams, yeah. He worked here a couple weeks. Good guy. He gave me this. <laughs> Heartwarming. You know where he's now? Nope. But he did tell me that someone would be by to pick this up. Right here. I'm someone. This is Manhattan. This is extortion. <laughs> oh, come on. This is Manhattan. Your parents must be very proud. Excuse me. Master with no real, not tragically symbolic. Why tragically? Because it means that I'll be forced to listen to you attach some greater semiotic meaning to that toy. You know, I think the stress of your father's disappearance is starting to get to you. The only thing getting to me is Jared. You should consider a vacation. I tell your state of mind. So would putting a bullet in Jared's kneecap, but I can't do that now, can I? Because I don't know where he is, do I? Say cheese. shooting triplets.
are pretenders among us. I was taken from my family. 36,000 is already demonstrating more talent than any of our others. How many people died because of what I fought up? Since I broke out, I've spent every moment searching for my past. He's a pretender. A genius who can become anyone that he wants to be. The center wants him alive. Preferably. He defends the weak and abuse. Life's a gift. Too pasty? Not pasty enough. Get her a tree, huh? Mm. I didn't know Earl Shy did hair. And Darren, don't you think that's a little harsh? Harsh? From an agent? Brian, this is a modeling firm, not a halfway house for former prom queens. Mr. Fax. Jared. Brian, I assume you've seen Jared's portfolio. Very impressive. No, it's exceptional. You've obviously worked with the masters. Avedon, Penn, Newton. Their influence is unmistakable. I enjoyed their books quite a bit. <laughs> their books, yes, that's uh, very witty. You're scheduled to shoot the Cindy Thomas portfolio at 11.30. I haven't met her yet, but I hear she's exceptional. Well, she's still very raw, but uh, her potential is amazing. And so far, no photographer has capture that true look, the uh, elusive quality that will make her the next thump. Um, her. Kimberly Green. She died in a car accident, right? That's the official version. Was there something else? A man was stalking Kimberly. But the police think that she drove into the river by accident. There's no doubt in my mind that he killed her. Her body was never found. And they never captured the stock? No. It's still out there somewhere. Uh, Brian, I need you to uh, turn the monster back. I used to have the entire Thunderbirds collection on reels for this. Thunderbirds? Yeah. Well, it's like Star Wars, only it's little talking puppet heads. Kind of like Harold's birds? Called your office, but the line was busy. I was on the phone to St. Thomas. Your father's vacation home. I spoke to his houseboy, who for six years has spoken perfect English, but today, when I asked if he had seen my father, he couldn't understand a damn word. He will come back. So, uh, so uh, this package came for you. It's from me, and uh, it's moving. Jared. Mm. Oh, Dad, it's Mrs. Paul. So much for your empty view, Master. Here, you two bond. Parker. Where's Daddy? He lives to torment me. That would be Jared. Mr. Lyle. Miss Parker. I swear that we had an appointment in my office 30 minutes ago. A pressing matter arose. Unfortunately, it was a false lead on Jared. Hmm. That's too bad. So he came up empty again. In New York, I believe? He had already left his last locale when we arrived. Any clue as to where he might be going? I saw nothing that could be interpreted in that manner. How unfortunate. Excellent with garlic butter.
I'm going out. If anyone asks where I am, bye. You look great, Cindy. Fantastic. <laughs> Extraordinary. Lovely. You look great. Great. Relax. Have fun. Be a kid. We're selling you now, so be you. Say cheese. <laughs> That's it. That's the one. That was great. You can go home now. <laughs> It was a little ridiculous, but it was a lot of fun. Thank you. <laughs> Jared, that last shot just may be the cover of our next agency catalog. Exceptional. I couldn't agree with Brian Moore. I am curious, though, where in the hell did you come up with that technique? Happy Faces photo fun. Excuse me. Excuse me, my name's Jared. Excuse me. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. No problem. I was just uh, working. Hmm. A bearded lady. Now I bet people would pay money to see that. J just uh, <clears throat> experimenting. No flaws now. Well, to me, it's the flaws that make a face interesting. But certainly a photographer like yourself knows that. I'm a photo enhancer. But I thought I just saw you taking pictures in the studio. Now, I'm used to having a camera trained on me. But other people, they might not feel that way. I told you I'm not a shooter. Okay. It must have been someone that looks like you. Have a nice day. It was nice to meet you. Stone crabs, maybe, but donuts? I had my first donut when I was here. Long story. <laughs> You're right, it is. A, it's a great town. I used to love walking around, just taking everything in. And then after what happened to Kimberly. To her friends? Well, as much as she let me, she was a pretty private person. She wasn't really close to anybody except her sister. Really blame it though. I mean, it's really tough finding real friends when you're suspicious of everybody. Stalker. He made her life a living hell. He used to send her pictures of herself. What kind of pictures? Well, they're just doing everyday things like going to the store, eating in a restaurant. He used to write your mind over every one of them. Once he got so close to her, he attacked her with acid. All she ever wanted to be was normal, you know? I know the feeling. Is there something wrong? No. Everything's fine. Thank you for walking me home. I really appreciate it. It's my pleasure.
just ignore them. But I can't! Don't you understand? I can feel them all the time. There's nothing I can do, Jared. It's not fair! Fair, was it, Kimberly? Just wasn't fair. What? Little known fact. Lobsters make wonderful pets. Yeah. It was great hearing it scream when I threw it in boiling water. Is there a point to all of this? It's about your father. I thought that point was clear. If you know where my father is, you tell me. When you tell me where my parents are. I don't know. Find out. This isn't funny, Jared. Now you know how I feel. Happy hunting. And to Gladys, I say hello. Gladys. Who's... you would you oh miss parker gladys guilty exactly what the hell am i doing here gladys jared said you'd find this very valuable mm, sentimental value i suppose <laughs> i'm all tears well it, it's not in very good shape there are a few pieces missing would, would you like a cup of tea? <laughs> you seem a little tense. What the hell am I supposed to do with this McKindling? Jared said the man you're having lunch with tomorrow would be able to help. What man? Where? Jared said you'd know. <sighs> you wouldn't happen to know where there's a Chuck's Lobster house, would you? We may never know the exact uh, motives of the person who stalked Kimberly Green. I've identified several character traits which all stalkers exhibit by getting into the stalker's head, becoming a stalker, as it were. First and foremost, the stalker believes the victim belongs to him and him alone, and is attempting to control the victim's life through fear. By Controlling the victim's actions with fear, he manipulates her ability to interact with other people. A fear achieved by anonymity, avoiding any face-to-face -face confrontations with his victim. It's what the victim can't see that is most terrifying. And in what may have happened in the case of Kimberly Green, if a victim rejects the stalker's attempts to control her life, then the stalker is no longer in control and can turn to violence. Zoe, I'm sorry. It's okay. We're done. Thank you. I've been on a few auditions before, but never anything like this. What'd you call it again? A simulation. I needed to get inside the head of someone who's doing some pretty horrific things. You did a great job, thank you. Oh, one question. Why did you walk up to that policeman? A stranger off his cash to stop me for a day, I mean. That's a little up there. I was starting to feel kind of weird, you know. Well, I'm sorry if I got too real. I didn't mean to scare you. Yeah, well, I saw the cop and I figured it was time for you to feel a little nervous. It worked. Well, I don't usually remember my dreams, but this 
particular one was <laughs> I I was sitting in some kind of a bar and uh, everybody was walking around wearing leather <laughs> and uh, I was trying to flirt with the bartender who was woman all this time I'm talking saying some really clever things and you know like like dream clever and then she turns around and it's Miss Parker and now I'm I'm, I'm really turned on and, and she reaches out and grabs me and pulls me across the bar and starts shoving me into a blender Sorry to interrupt your session. A session? Well, we're not having any session. But I'm trying to get a beat on Miss Parker. Have either of you seen her? No. Not since lunch. Oh, um, no, actually, um, I think she, she said something about uh, pursuing a lead on Jared. Really? Yeah. Lunch in Maine. Neat trick. Have her call me when she returns from lunch. about our sessions you, you you think you heard the part about the blender Sydney oh, oh. sorry good to see you you have a good eye for not being a photographer cut kind of a hobby it, it, it's honest and you captured her. I mean, if the rest of these are like this one, you should really show your work. I c couldn't do that. Nah. Ne never. What's wrong? Zinga. I found this on my vanity. He's after me now. Why? Because he needs a new target. I want you to move in with me. I'll hire a private 24-hour security guard. It's not going to make any difference. If, it, if he wants to get me, he'll get me. Just, just like he got Kimberly. Chuck's Lobster House, can I help you? Oh, Miss Parker. Is there anyone in this burg who doesn't know me? Jared's table is right this way. You've got company. Jared's here. I'm afraid it's only me. Man. It would seem Jared has set us up. Supermodel Kimberly Green's death accidental. Her sister Erica Green believes, like many, she was murdered by the stalker who had been harassing her for months. Her sister Erica Green believes, like many, she was murdered by the stalker. Jared Adams. I'm a photographer with the Darren Fax Agency. I don't have anything to say to you people. The stalker's back. He's after one of your sister's friends, Cindy Thomas. Come in. There's nothing more difficult than missing family. Kimberly wasn't the stalker's only victim. I lost the only family I've ever had.
When was this taken? One of the foster homes we were in. We had a strange childhood. I doubt you'd understand. Oh, uh, I might. We grew up in the system. Went from one foster home to another. You never knew what kind of situation you were walking into. But no matter what, Kimberly would never let anyone hurt us. Yes. Look, this is the fourth time I told you people I am not switching. I tell you what, why don't you give me your home number and I'll call you back? I didn't think so. I can't stand having my privacy in the I know what you mean. I think I would have liked your sister. She strikes me as a survivor. She was. There was only one thing she couldn't handle. Feeling trapped by her life, by the stock. One fed the other. A way out was all she could think about. I'm sure it was on her mind when her car went off the bridge. At least now she's at peace. Six one. Yes, Boca Raton, Florida. May I help you? Thank you. That's all the information I need. <laughs> no wonder they want your long distance business, Erica. of Jared, I think I have finally reached the end of my rope. Afraid I might dad. I haven't seen this in years. Was it yours? No, it was your mother's. Jared stayed with me a few months ago. It's starting to make sense to me now. What is? 
His preoccupation with your mother and this. He told me the next time you and I met to give it to you. I don't know why, but I've been carrying it with me everywhere. She dances in there. I'm afraid it doesn't work without the other figurine. I'm sorry, I don't know where it is. I thought this was lost, but Jared found it tucked away in the attic, along with some other items that belong to your mother. She bought it one day when we were together. It always reminded me of her delicate beauty, her graceful dancer's gait. My mother was a dancer. A great one. She never told you? I am learning that there are a lot of things she never told me. But it certainly explains all the lessons I took as a child. Do you still dance? No, I stopped much. Uh, she stopped too. After she met her father. Ben, do you know where my father is? He's missing. And Jared led me here in hopes that I would find him. I'm sorry. I don't know about your father. Only your mother. So, this could have been taken any time. You know that it wasn't. Erica, I know that you speak to your sister every night at 1030. I am not the stalker. And you expect me to just believe that? I know where Kimberly is. If I was the stalker, if I wanted to invade her privacy, I would be doing that instead of standing here talking to you. The one person that can help her to trust me. I understand how she feels. No one can understand that. I do. I told you, Jared. You're safe here. They're not watching you. This is the only camera in my office. I took it out of the ceiling this morning. But remember, it's only a special favor to you. I have to put it back in a few minutes. So we can talk? Just you and me? You can do anything you like. Home. And 
at the agency. But you know, near the end, I felt like I was being watched even there. I think I was just being paranoid. I don't think so. The public doesn't know who Cindy Thomas is. But the stalker does. You think he has access to the agency? I don't know. But I need your help to find out. I need you to help me find those eyes. No, Jared. It's the only way out of this trap. Trust me. I think I know a way. The relationship between your mother and I lasted almost 15 years before she died. I can still see her beautiful vision walking up to the inn on that sunny day in April. <laughs> I was on the ladder when she called to me. Her roadster had broken down. And she tried to fix it herself. <laughs> yes, she was covered in oil. <laughs> so did you help her with the car? She helped me to the doctor. I fell off the ladder. <laughs> That's how she was, always helping others, even when she was in need. Is that the spring you two fell in love? That was the spring we became friends. That's all we were for many years. She would come up to the inn every April, spend the first two weeks. I lived for those weeks of joy. It may sound corny, but it was a simple thing she loved. Gathering flowers down by the lake, watching the stars. Catherine had an unquenchable zest for life, a sparkle, until... She met my father? Well, at first she seemed happy, uh, but year after year, the sparkle faded. But she kept coming to see you. Well, I was an oasis in the life she was trapped in. She never told me about that life. Only her feelings. That's the way she was with me. It was many years before our lips touched. But I truly believe that we were meant to spend our lives with each other. We could only have what we had. I hate to know that she was so sad. She was until you came along. After you were born, the sparkle returned. <laughs> you gave her the strength to remember who she was. She was making big changes in her life. But then she was gone. I do too. <laughs> Don't be sad. She was never sad when she talked about you. And that was all she really ever wanted to talk about. What was the other figurine that went in here? Another dancer. A little girl. Shame they can't dance together anymore. What are you doing here? Your work. It's excellent. I can't believe you've never shown this to anybody. I, I, I told you I couldn't do that. Toby, you have a gift. It's like the camera speaks for you. These are beautiful people. I'm n not one of them. Beauty is more than appearance. It's also about real emotion. I look at your photographs, especially the eyes of your subjects, and I see a lot of that emotion. What do you want?
Who we took these? Of everyone who was at the shoot. Anything? No. Baby wasn't there. Baby's changed his habits. Stalkers, they always hunt their prey in the same way over and over again. He was there. What's this? There's a figure behind this backdrop. No heroin chic. Oh, please. Send this one to Bob Vila. Maybe he needs a new hand model. Uh, this just came in for you, Brian. Mr. Faxon, Paris is calling on the conference. Oh, lovely. Line. Cindy to be mine. 
What's the matter, Brian? You look like you've seen a ghost. I thought you... I thought you would... No. I'm not. And I'm not afraid anymore, either. Relax. Let your portfolio speak for itself. Don't worry, Darren's going to love you. I, I, I never thought this, this day would come for me. I, no, no matter what happens, I... I thank you, Jared. Knock him dead. Isn't it? Pretty. The music. As usual, Jared, there is no music at the end of one of your games. Oh, well, I am very sorry that you didn't have a nice trip. But you have everything you need to find what you're looking for. Did you give me this, Jan? Let's just say happy birthday, Miss Parker. My birthday isn't until January 3rd. That's the point. from my office? You've been gone for over a month. Where have you been? If I told you I couldn't protect you. Come along. Just a while, Mr. Rains want to meet with us. But, Daddy... Just listen to your father and follow my lead.
Coming up next, Angel awaits the arrival of Darla's baby. Don't miss the drama of Angel, next on TNT. On the Pretender? Yes, sir. Well, they've never told you about this place. Yeah. She came here exactly this time every year. She loved the spring. You were in love with her, weren't you? Yes. There was a part of her she kept hidden. Mr. Lyle shows up, your father disappears. It's too coincidental to be just a coincidence. for the camera. All right, we're all done, kids. Ow! Where's Planned Parenthood when you need them? Hey, hey, folks, how doing? You know, we got a special going for uh, extra copies for Grandma and Grandpa. Do I look like I drive a minivan? Do you know this man? Yeah, sure, that's Jared. Adams, yeah. He worked here a couple weeks. Good guy. He gave me this. <laughs> Heartwarming. You know where he's now? Nope. But he did tell me that someone would be by to pick this up. Right here. I'm someone. This is Manhattan. This is extortion. <laughs> oh, come on. This is Manhattan. Your parents must be very proud. Excuse me. Master with no real, not tragically symbolic. Why tragically? Because it means that I'll be forced to listen to you attach some greater semiotic meaning to that toy. You know, I think the stress of your father's disappearance is starting to get to you. The only thing getting to me is Jared. You should consider a vacation. I tell your state of mind. So would putting a bullet in Jared's kneecap, but I can't do that now, can I? Because I don't know where he is, do I? Say cheese.
Oh, oh. Great gig. Uh, sir beats shooting triplets. There are pretenders among us. I was taken from my family. 36,000. He's already demonstrating more talent than any of our others. How many people died because of what I fought up? Since I broke out, I've spent every moment searching for my past. He's a pretender. A genius who can become anyone that he wants to be. The center wants him alive. Preferably. He defends the weak and abuse. Life's a gift. You, doctor. I am today. Too pasty? Not pasty enough. Get her a tree, huh? Mm. I didn't know Earl Shy did hair. And Darren, don't you think that's a little harsh? Harsh? From an agent? Brian, this is a modeling firm, not a halfway house for former prom queens. Mr. Fax. Jared. Brian, I assume you've seen Jared's portfolio. Very impressive. No, it's exceptional. You've obviously worked with the masters. Avedon, Penn, Newton. Their influence is unmistakable. I enjoyed their books quite a bit. <laughs> their books, yes, that's uh, very witty. You're scheduled to shoot the Cindy Thomas portfolio at 11.30. I haven't met her yet, but I hear she's exceptional. Well, she's still very raw, but uh, her potential is amazing. And so far, no photographer has capture the true look, the uh, elusive quality that will make her the next thump. Um, her. Kimberly Green. She died in a car accident, right? That's the official version. Was there something else? A man was stalking Kimberly. But the police think that she drove into the river by accident. There's no doubt in my mind that he killed her. Her body was never found. And they never captured the stock? No. It's still out there somewhere. Uh, Brian, I need you to uh, turn those for me. I used to have the entire Thunderbirds collection on reels for this. Thunderbirds? Yeah. Well, it's like Star Wars, only it's little talking puppet heads. Kind of like Harold's birds? Called your office, but the line was busy. I was on the phone to St. Thomas. Your father's vacation home. I spoke to his houseboy, who for six years has spoken perfect English, but today, when I asked if he had seen my father, he couldn't understand a damn word. He will come back. So? Uh, so, uh, this package came for you. It's from me. And, uh, it's moving. Jared. Mm. Oh, Dad, it's Mrs. Paul. So much for your empty view, Master. Here, you two bond. Parker. Where's Daddy? He lives to torment me. That would be Jared. Mr. Lyle. Miss Parker. I swear that we had an appointment in my office 30 minutes ago. A pressing matter arose. Unfortunately, it was a false lead on Jared. Hmm. That's too bad. So he came up empty again. In New York, I believe? He had already left his last locale when we arrived. Any clue as to where he might be going? I saw nothing that could be interpreted in that manner. How unfortunate. 
Excellent with garlic butter. I'm going out. If anyone asks where I am, bye. You look great, Cindy. Fantastic. <laughs> Extraordinary. Lovely. You look great. Great. Relax. Have fun. Be a kid. We're selling you now, so be you. Say cheese. <laughs> That's it. That's the one. That was great. You can go home now. <laughs> It was a little ridiculous, but it was a lot of fun. Thank you. <laughs> Jared, that last shot just may be the cover of our next agency catalog. Exceptional. I couldn't agree with Brian Moore. I am curious, though, where in the hell did you come up with that technique? Happy faces photo fun. Excuse me. Excuse me, my name's Jared. Excuse me. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. No problem, I was just uh, working. Hmm. A bearded lady. Now I bet people would pay money to see that. J just, uh, <clears throat> experimenting. No flaws now. Well, to me, it's the flaws that make a face interesting. But certainly a photographer like yourself knows that. I'm a photo enhancer. But I thought I just saw you taking pictures in the studio. Now, I'm used to having a camera trained on me. But other people, they might not feel that way. I told you I'm not a shooter. Okay. It must have been someone that looks like you. Have a nice day. It was nice to meet you. It's a great town. I used to love walking around, just taking everything in. And then after what happened to Kimberly. You two were friends? Well, as much as she let me, she was a pretty private person. I wasn't really close to anybody except her sister. I don't really blame it, though. I mean, it's really tough finding real friends when you're suspicious of everybody. Stalker. He made her life a living hell. She used to send her pictures of herself. What kind of pictures? Well, they're just doing everyday things, like going to the store, eating in a restaurant. And he used to write your mind over every one of them. Once he got so close to her, he attacked her with acid. All she ever wanted to be was normal, you know? I know the feeling.
Shut them off, Sidney. Shut the cameras off. I don't control them, Jared. <laughs>